Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's Dope Center 930 here, and I have decided, due to uh, more and more beginners deciding to solder for the first time um, because of the reset glitch hack, to show you guys kind of some tips and tricks and uh, demonstration of how I've been soldering uh, with Xbox 360s and any kind of component, really. Uh, because I personally know a few people that have attempted the reset glitch hack on their good Xbox and have messed it up. And when I've been reading around in the forums, I see tons of people um, that fry the <clears throat> fry the parts or the the pads that they need to solder to for their glitch. And that really sucks, especially if it's your only console and you have a new console. I even seen people that said <clears throat> they just bought a slim for that purpose and they decided to do it themselves for the first time and completely destroy their console so hopefully this will help um, prevent that if you decide to do it yourself um, go on pretty much if you have never soldered before and you're gonna attempt to reset glitch hack a console for the first time um, that's almost suicide uh, I hate to tell you um, I definitely recommend if you're gonna reset glitch hack for the first time without any prior soldering experience to grab a crappy motherboard or crappy component of some kind just to practice on and to you know just get practice wires and try soldering it onto little points on there and if you're ripping pads off of that then why would you take that to your good Xbox it doesn't make sense so um, yeah so I guess I'll show you guys uh, first I want to show you guys if you guys were watching my last video um, after I cleaned up the probe I ended up using electric tape and stuff this is what it um, oops this is what it looks like so I think it looks pretty solid and hopefully it'll work well. Um, I also, one thing I am going to add to it is I just took, this is like a clear, cheap, like, I don't know, 15 cent pen that I snapped off and I'm going to put the needle or the, hold on, I'm going to put the safety pin, it is not working. Oh, but I'm going to put the safety pin through like this, and I'm actually going to um, hot glue or super glue it to the inside of this and then wrap the top with electric tape so that when I'm going to get the key, I can just grab it like a pen. I think it's a lot easier than having to, you know, grab this little dangly thing and try to hit the point when you're messing with light on drives. Um, and also, this is totally random. has nothing to do with Xbox 360s, but it's something I'm stoked on that I thought I would share with you guys. Um... So my, my iPhone, um, it's just the original 2G one, I bought it probably three months ago off Craigslist and after about a month and a half, um, the service started getting really crappy on it, like one bar and then I wouldn't get service for like an hour at a time and then I get service for like 10 minutes and then it just completely cut out on me and I haven't had a phone because this one hasn't been working for the past month. So I went on YouTube and I was looking for different methods on how to fix it and a couple people were saying to like try to re-jail break it and because it's running on T-Mobile and I tried that with no success and then I saw another guy that had a video which I thought seemed kind of ridiculous but I went ahead and said you know who cares um, there's you know I've really there's nothing else I, I can do because I've tried everything so uh, he recommended to go to my like go to the kitchen get a piece of foil and fold it in half so both sides are shiny and open the back of the phone up and just place the sheet of foil inside and I did that and since then I've had service, I don't know if you can see it, probably not, but um yeah I've actually had better service than I ever have when I originally bought the phone so that's awesome and if you have an iPhone with crappy service regardless of whether it's on T-Mobile or not or any phone really I um I guess the foil just somehow um, makes the signal or the, the just expand in the range of it or something like that. So, okay, well, now we're four minutes into the video, so I should probably get started. Let me lower the webcam so you can see what we're working with. <clears throat> okay, so right here we have a completely junk motherboard. Um, as you can see, it has no GPU because a long time ago um, I was trying to get into reballing the chips, but I do feel like my equipment probably isn't good enough to reball so I gave up on it after a few failed attempts like this one. Um, so yeah, let me show you guys some basic soldering stuff. Okay, for one, when you are soldering motherboards or components like this of any sort, you need to buy this. If you're located in the US, it's just uh, it's called a Rosen Soldering Flux. I picked it up at Radio Shack for like five or six bucks. If you're not in the US, you know, as long as it's similar stuff, um, then you're good to go. Um, 
let's see what else okay so yeah, I guess I'll just show you let me solder a point okay so the way you use this stuff is um, I'm gonna use a sock you need some kind of way to rub it on you don't have to use a sock but I recommend using cloth or even I've seen people use q-tips whatever just you need to rub it on so let's say uh, let's pick a point let's pick a point okay I don't know if you can see it but where is it Where's my finger okay right here there's a row of little dots I'm gonna I'm gonna do it on the last one right there that you can see so what you're gonna do is you're gonna get your flux and you are going to dab the point you're working with you can do pretty heavy amounts go ahead and dab it and then I typically rub it in until you have a nice just you don't want it really globby when you're done just a nice clear gloss over whatever point you're working with and then this. Yes, okay. And then what you want to do when you are soldering, let's say, a wire. Um, if you're using an executor cool runner, then you don't have to do this next step because the wires are already going to be, you know, pre, uh, they're going to have the edges off, metal will be exposed. And then uh, also the executor's wires that they come with, they're already pre-tinned. So you, this next step, just completely ignore it if you're using this for just reset glitching um, with a cool runner. But for everyone else that's curious, this isn't just for reset glitching, this is for any kind of wire connecting. You want to expose some wire. A little bit more, I just usually burn off the tips. Okay. Then, what you want to do to make things easier is it's called tinning. And if you're not familiar with timing, uh, tinning, you are going to actually apply some solder to the tip of the wire so there's already solder on there and when you put it on the actual point on the motherboard or whatever you're soldering to it it'll already be on there and it'll flow a lot easier and nicer so I definitely recommend tinning uh, also <clears throat> when soldering you want to keep the tip of your soldering iron very clean so uh, they recommend cleaning it after every usage but I definitely don't do that but I will go ahead and clean it like that as you can see and then also um, when you are going to be soldering every time you should actually feed a bit of solder onto the tip which is called tinning as well you're just tinning the the tip of the iron so if you feed it on it'll just go right on like that and so then let's go ahead and I already have a little bit on here so I can just kind of glob it on typically you don't want to put the the solder on the iron to put onto the wire typically you're supposed to hold the the solder next to the iron and uh, the wire so let me actually do that, it's probably better, I don't want to teach you guys bad ways since I'm supposed to help okay so right here I have the solder I don't know if you can see it but it's sticking up and I'm going to put the wire the tip that's exposed against the solder and put my iron on the other side and the solder will actually flow right onto the wire Okay, and then also, <clears throat> with that point on the board, it's always a good idea to do the same thing. It's not called tinning, um, but you should always just put a little bit of solder on top of the point you're going to be soldering with. I already have some on the iron, so I'll just go ahead and dab a little bit. Okay, so now there's a little bit of solder on top. And then, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and put the wire on the point and just tap it and there, there you go it's on the wire is solid really firm um, let's see things I recommend when you're doing the reset glitch hack because the points are so small they're even smaller than what I'm dealing with right now um, usually when I solder a wire on I'll give it a tiny little tug um, just to make sure that it's getting good contact and that the you know the connection's firm. But when you're doing the reset glitch hack, because the wires are so so not the wires, I'm sorry, because the points are so so small and the pads are so fragile, um, I still do a little pull just because I mean if it's not on there at all, then your your glitch is gonna the timings are gonna suck or it's not even gonna glitch at all. But be careful, definitely be careful. And then also as you can see how the wire is, is in, it's in this direction because that's the way I soldered it, I soldered it at an angle. If you're soldering 
uh, let's say, okay, let's say you have the CPU reset, right? And that is, where is it at? Okay, the CPU reset is right about here. Let's say when you solder, you solder it, and the wire is coming out this way, but the wire wraps around and comes through here, because that's where the chip is on the other side. Oh, I lied. The chip is right here. But um, let's say that the wire is going, it needs to go the opposite way of the direction you soldered it in. Make sure that you either put tape, so like, I don't know how to explain this to you. Okay, the wire is this way. And if the wire needs to go back the other way, you don't want to pull it over and have it going that way. Because since you soldered in it this direction and those points are so fragile, if you go the other direction, you're going to rip that pad right out. And then you just, you know, pretty much screwed it and you have to do the alternate points, which are much, uh, much more pain in the butt. So what you should do is either put a dab of hot glue, a bit of tape or whatever it takes onto a point a little bit, you know, uh, onto a point on the wire that's pretty close to the original soldering point and then have it going back. So it's not pulling it all on your point, it's just pulling on this, uh, on the wire. Um, let's see, what else? What can I recommend? Uh, let's see, when it comes to wire, people have asked me to, um, what's a good, good uh, wire to use, 30 watt or 15 watt? Um, in my opinion, I don't think it matters at all. I've used both. This is just a cheap, I think it was like 12 bucks. I bought at Home Depot after the one with my rework station went out on me. To be honest with you, I don't feel like it really matters because the thing is, you're not really touching the board. You know, you're touching it for a brief second. If you're going to hold the iron, yeah, down to the board, then yeah, don't get me wrong, after a while, if it's really hot, you're going to damage something. But if you're soldering correctly, your heat's going to be applied to the wire, which is going to flow right onto the point. And it's only going to be for brief periods of time, which it wouldn't matter. It's not going to mess up anything long term. So that's one question I've gotten. Wire does not really matter. It's just be careful. You know, it's, it's gentle. It's, it's fragile. Use flux so that heat is distributed greatly or, you know, easily it flows. Because if you're not using flux, it's going to take a lot longer for the wire to stick to the point for the heat to be transferred. And then by that time, then yeah, maybe your iron will cause damage. So if you're using components, I can tell you any professional or anybody that has experience with so uh, soldering will definitely tell you flux is a definite must. Um, what else? Um, okay, so right here. I have a matrix chip. It's actually a faulty chip. Um, lucky me, the first one I bought was a faulty chip. But I guess it's great for an example um, because if you're using the glitch hack, you're going to have to solder the wires in the chip. Uh, so for one, <clears throat> okay, so for one, let's say you have the cool runner and you want to solder the wires um, to the connections. As you can see, a lot of the points already have solder on them, but let me put it closely. Let me let it focus, come on. Should autofocus, but it's not doing it. But okay, there's two points without any solder on them. They are these two right here. And <clears throat> in order for you to do the wire, to put the solder the wire on, you're going to do the exact same thing I just showed you. Um, I typically don't use flux when it's a chip like this because usually the points are really easy to um, solder onto. It usually grabs the the solder very well but I mean if you want to feel free to add a little dab of flux to the, the points but basically you're gonna do the same same concepts uh, just hold the solder against the point dab the iron on it and it'll melt right on as you can see hopefully let's see it is let's see the third point from the corner one <laughs> I don't know how good you can see it or not, whatever. Um, and then, so yeah, let me do another wire and put the wire under the point. For the wire, it's going to be the exact same thing. I know this this uh, video is pretty random, but I didn't really plan it out too well. I just knew that I've gotten a lot of questions when it comes to soldering, and that's really the only thing that can go majorly down south when you're doing the reset glitch hack. Um, because other than that, like if you failed program, you could always redo when you failed program the chip or failed NAND reading, there's always ways, but making sure that you um, <clears throat> making sure that you solder correctly is a biggie. Um, so yeah, as you can see, hopefully I just tin the wire, and then it's going to be the exact same thing I did on the other side now. Just put the tip of the wire right above the point that you just put solder on on the chip. Apply heat for a brief second or so. 
Oh, let me do it again. Give it a second so that it hardens the solder. And there you go. The wire is on there extremely firm. So, um, I can kind of think, is there anything else people have been asking me? Um, I think that's about it. I think that's it right now. Um, I will still be doing a step-by-step -step, um, Cool Runner installation where I will actually solder the wires on the camera. The only thing that sucks is that this, this webcam, although it has good quality and the audio, in my opinion, is pretty good, I cannot zoom in, which kind of definitely, not kind of, it definitely sucks ass. Um, and sadly, this camera right here that I showed in one of my other videos, I don't have a tripod for it, so there's no way I can hold it on my, you know, hold it in my hands while I'm soldering. I need both hands, so for right now, this is kind of my only option. So I guess we'll have to make the best of it. That's why I usually, um, when I make the video, I was planning on soldering it, but then I'll also put a picture up of where I'm soldering to so that you can see exactly, because there's no way, you know, I can't be like, solder to that point. You're going to say, you know, what the hell, what point? But, um, yeah, I guess if you guys have any other soldering questions, just let me know. And like I said, it's sorry that the video is random, the points I try to get across. And if you have any other questions regarding solder, let me know. And I guess if, I, if, uh, if you want me to, I'll make another video um, adding those extra, you know, whatever I missed out on. But I think that's about it. Um, yeah, so I guess that's it. Well, this is Dope Center 930. And... Uh, if you haven't already, go to dopesnation.tk slash forums and sign up for the forums. I'm trying to expand in the website and get it out there because, like I said in my past videos, it's just starting up and it's going to need a lot to get it uh, kicked into gear. But, alright then, still 730 and thanks for watching.